Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrostevo, and it's time for our Pokemon Premier League Division 1 Season 4 Draft Analysis for the Atona City Enders. First off, thank you very much, Anima, for the awesome new logo. Second off, thank you very much, Kelly, for these awesome graphics during this draft analysis. I am really, really excited for Season 4 of the Pokemon Premier League. If you missed it, there was a live draft done by Raikwin, which was awesome. Shoutouts to him and also Potato Jim for taking the time and the awesome effort in putting that all together. Now, for those of you who were not able to see my previous forays in the Pokemon Premier League, we generally do, eh, okay. Uh, we always seem to kind of finish right around seventh place overall, have a shaky start, and then normally have some type of really really bad luck or just poor playing in there somewhere and that leaves us in the middle of the pack which is not terrible we've never been relegated but we can do better and that's what we're going to do this season so we're not taking middle middle of the pack this season we're not going to do eh, top three we're we're here to destroy it all especially with the team that i've drafted this time all my plans, my draft planning, went out the window after the first uh, two round picks there. So with that adaptation that the Eternity City Enders had to have, we're going to take that into the season and just melt faces, basically. So we're going to use this as an opportunity to gonna go over the team that I drafted, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the draft picks that I had. First off, I did get my first round pick the way I wanted it to, which is pretty normal for me. Normally, I'm pretty good about deciding what's the most important to draft the first. I was 12th in the snake draft order, which means I was the last pick, and then I immediately got a will pick, so I would get two picks in a row every two rounds, basically. And while that is nice to get two picks in a row, that does mean that I am the most likely to be sniped, similar to the person on the very, very front end, just because there's so many picks that happen in between yours. I really like being in the middle of the pack, uh, as far as draft order goes, honestly. But that's okay. Um, the only plans I had going into this were to kind of have a little bit more team cohesiveness. In the past, I've really chosen teams that were fun to play with, but they didn't necessarily cover each other's weaknesses very well, or they left me very, very uh, prone to... In just injury via hazard stacking or via one specific type. So I'm going to have a lot more team. I'm really trying to avoid the word synergy here. That's what's going on. Why I'm missing so many words. Now, first pick. Round one. Garchomp. Very, very important team member here. Not only did I think uh, this would be a good pick to deprive everyone else of Garchomp. Very popular league Pokemon. But, uh... First round pick just because he can be built around so easily with the ability to go offensive or defensive and in the offensive capability having special options, physical options, swords dance, substitute. He can set up rocks, uh, just very, very easy to build a team around. In addition to that, he is also a very reliable choice band Pokemon or choice scarf Pokemon since he edges out that base 100 speed tier very nicely. Uh, it's also notable that I have several Garchomp bred already. I probably have five or six Garchomp bred, so that alleviates a lot of the breeding concern on my end, which is very nice from a time consumption standpoint. Something I've struggled with in the past in the Pokemon Premier League and other leagues as well, honestly, is just that I really wouldn't draft that much hazard control. Uh, and so that's why my next pick goes along with Garchomp pretty well, because not only does it satisfy my need to use all three starters in League format, but I immediately get one of the best spinners you can have in a League format, and that's Mega Blastoise. Mega Blastoise is very nice forming um, kind of a, a nice little wall-breaking core of sorts if I needed to with Garchomp. But more importantly, very reliable spinner, and it's a spinner that can threaten out spin blockers, because most spin blockers, of course, are going to be weak to Dark Pulse. And those that aren't weak to it don't like taking Water-type moves that are boosted by Mega Launcher. So, very reliable, bulky spinner there. And if I need additional bulk, or if I need to go uh, a lot more 
tanky, I can do that too and still have a relatively reliable choice to uh, depend on right there. Now we have also with the, those two picks, we had the start of our fairy dragon steel and our fire, water, grass cores. And in league formats, I always love to build those cores into my team. Now I will say from here, this is where my draft plan really fell apart. I originally wanted to get uh, Florges and Rosary to go along with Garchomp and Mega Blastoise, but they were sniped almost immediately. And then my secondary picks, things like Whimsicott or Tang Growth were also sniped before they got back to me in the draft order. And so I was trying to figure out, okay, I need to go ahead and get my Fairy, because normally I draft my Fairy in the first round, because Fairies are just really, really important from a defensive standpoint. But I also needed something that... Uh, could perform a defensive role. I didn't want to go too offensive with my fairy. And I just, Sylveon I think was even also taken at this point. And so that left Gardevoir, which I was really, really pleased with picking up as my third round pick. I have not used Gardevoir in any league capacity before at all, but it gives me a nice offensive synergy here where I don't have either of those types for my offense yet. And then for defense, it has a wonderful trace ability uh, which can be used even offensively depending on the situation but it is nice to pick up either things like water absorb or things like regenerator uh, intimidate also all those are very very nice to pick up in a defensive sense because it can force switches that it otherwise wouldn't be able to to, to deal with uh, synchronize is nice but i think i'd rather have trace for the most part as far as abilities go uh, and as far as uh, more especially defensive pokemon goes gardevoir hits a nice speed tier where it's not set up fodder for most Pokemon. I also like that it can have access to Destiny Bond, Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, uh, all four support options. It can get Wish, it can get Heal Bell. So I do have a built-in Cleric there as well. So kind of settling on multiple fronts here instead of going with Florges. But the, the trade-off is really the speed, which is nice. Uh, I did like Florges' Mono Fairy type, but we will definitely make use of some powerful future sites here with Gardevoir, because that is a fun move to use. Now alongside Gardevoir, my wheel pick actually ended up being Rotom C, or Rotom Moform. Um, I definitely wanted to go ahead and get that grass type. Uh, I decided to go with Rotom Cut. Uh, my first initial secondary grass pick was Whimsicott, because I thought, okay, I can still get the grass fairy thing going on there. But since that was sniped for me, I ended up going with Rotom. I didn't want a grass type that would compound uh, my weaknesses too much, which is my why my initial grass type was Roserade with Grass Poison. Because then I'm not compounding too many weaknesses. Rotom, while it does give me the extra ice weakness alongside Garchomp, it basically shores up all my other weaknesses in a single pick. Uh, we now have the start of some Volturn momentum gaining as well. And I've used Rotom Cut before in the... Uh, um, Indigo League of Legends, excuse me. Wow, that's when you know you've played in too many leagues when you're trying to remember which league you used a Pokemon in. Uh, and I really enjoyed the wall-breaking power it had just with specs. In conjunction with, it can be a very reliable Scarfer as well. I don't like using it as a Scarfer because normally you have to put yourself in a lot of weird 50-50 positions as far as using electric or grass type moves. But that aside, it's great to force people into positions where, hey, I have to switch something into a Leaf Storm. What do I have to take this? It's the same thing as Draco Meteor, where you're just forcing your opponent to take a really big hit. And that's why I wanted Rose Raid originally, Leaf Storm. Uh, now, I still don't have that secondary poison type of here, but trading it off for Volt Switch, not bad at all. A secondary Will O Wisp spreader as well can be very, very annoying for the opponent to deal with. And then they also have to figure out. Well, what type of Rotom is this? It can run more defensive sets if I just need to switch something in on Scalds too. That can be nice. Uh, so I'm very, very satisfied with that pick. And I like Rotom cut form overall, just because it's something I'm a little bit more familiar with. Now for my next pick, I actually was expecting to get Sneasel because I definitely expected Weavile to go much earlier in the draft or uh, order rather. But Weavile on Round five of the draft was still around for some reason. And so I decided to go with Weavile over Sneasel just because I had saved some money because I wasn't able to get 
the Pokemon that I wanted on rounds three and four. So picking up Weavile was really nice. It's a Pokemon that most people are familiar with just because of the Stab Ice option. Stab Dark, very fast, very threatening. And it's also a defensive pick in the sense that that's one less thing that can threaten my Garchomp. Now, you can still have people draft Mamoswine, of course, but Weavile being faster than Mamoswine and being able to hit it with a low click makes it a little bit more viable for this team. Now, Blastoise is my only hazard removal at this time, and that's something that uh, in the live stream that kind of doted on was just my team's weakness to hazards, especially adding Weavile in there. And so I needed something to really switch in on poison and fairy types because I didn't really have that at this time either. So in addition to Weavile's ability to go either Swords Dance or Substitute, uh, really all it needs is Knock Off, Ice Shard, Icicles, Crash, and maybe a coverage move like Poison Jab or Low Kick. Weavile's options are pretty straightforward, but they work. And some glue that works with those straightforward options is Magneton. Magneton, uh, I went with Magneton over Magnezone, who was actually still available at the time, because Magneton is 10 points of speed faster. And just based on how I intend to be using Magneton in this team, the speed will be necessary. I will be using it to trap things because that's very obvious and uh, at least forcing people into bringing options that are suboptimal. Like I would say a lot of the time running Shed Shell for your item is a suboptimal position, but you really want to be able to switch sometimes. If the threat of Magneton forces people into doing that, then it's done its job before the match even starts. Uh, it's not to be understated how hard it hits, even without analytic. Um, it can run Eviolite or it can run Life Orb, <coughs> just to kind of have a little bit more offensive presence on the field. We get to continue the Volt switching shenanigans here. And now I do have a ground type weakness because now I have that steel electric type, but now I have, that's really my first ground type weakness. So I'm not seeing that as being overly uh, present on this team. Uh, Magneton also kind of weirdly has access to some support moves such as the different screens that it can set up. It can Thunder Wave, uh, stab Steel Attacks for Fairies finally, so I have an offensive presence against those Fairies, which is very nice too. Now in the next rounds, um, rounds 7 all the way to the end, I admit that I didn't really plan for any of those. I kind of just reacted to what was happening in the draft at the time and seeing, okay, I need to make sure I have checks to X, Y, and Z. Talonflame had actually been drafted much earlier in the draft order, and I still didn't have a good check for it at this point. I mean, I could bring in Magneton on the Brave Bird, but then after that, it gets the Flare Blitz me in the face unless I'm Scarfed. Uh, so not a reliable check at all to Talonflame. And I also really wanted a secondary rock setter. That way I could alleviate some of that pressure from Garchomp. And I really just wanted a good defensive Pokemon in general, something that would pair up well with Gardevoir. And the answer to that was Rhyperior. Uh, I have used Rhyperior before in draft format, and he's very versatile, similarly to Garchomp. So while we do see uh, kind of doubling up on my weaknesses here, I have plenty of things to bring in for those weaknesses. For example, the water weakness, I have Blastoise and Rotom Cut for. The uh, ice weakness, I have Blastoise and I have Magneton for. And for the grass weakness, well, I have plenty of things for grass. So I wasn't necessarily worried about the weakness standpoint. Um, in addition to having someone else set up rocks, we also have access to uh, rock polish, swords dance, a choice band set, um, Rhyperior can run mixed options, albeit very weakly. He does get very random mixed coverage, such as Fire Blast and Flamethrower. Uh, that's more for like a four times weak scenario, but it's there. You know, that's something that we can take into account in team building, which is nice. I want options here is the main point. Uh, Rhyperior's ability, Solid Rock, also alleviates a little bit of the pressure from being really, really weak to things. And it also allows me to run a Rocky Helmet set similar to Garchomp in case I just want to have a defensive wall for the team. Now one, the last Pokemon that I had in my original draft plan on my round eight pick for four million was Primeape. Uh, I actually originally wanted Terrakian, which was drafted very, very early. And so Primeape was my uh, secondary pick and 
I didn't think anyone was going to pick Primate, so I kind of just left it until later. Now I ended up going with Primate for my round 8 pick just because at the time I didn't have anything else planned for my last two picks and I wanted to see how people will react to Primate being chosen. And Primate is just one of those Pokemon where I feel like a lot of people underestimate it because they think that it's either like a nostalgia pick or, oh yeah, you just need something to throw around close combat. And that's really underselling Primeape. First of all, Primeape hits base 95 speed. Very effective in league format. The very uh, the crowded base 90 speed point means that he can run a choice bin or a choice scarf very effectively. While he does fall below the wonder base speed point, he can still function with a choice bin or a choice scarf pretty effectively, which makes him pretty versatile in my eyes. On the secondary front, something that Terrakion can't do is have a lot of really good coverage. Primate gets access to Gunk Shot, Poison Jab, Iron Tail. It gets access to a lot of random elemental punches. It can use acrobatics. It can even have weird support with Encore. And most importantly for this team, I finally have a Pokemon that uses U-Turn. So now we have some wonderful Volt Turn shenanigans going on and Primeape is fast enough to make use of them with its very subpar bulk. It really needs to be able to hit and run, and that's exactly what it can do. Um, and if my opponent has a lot of options that can set up, I will have Encore in the back there just to force them into the position where they really need to, to switch out or risk getting KO. So that's pretty nice too. Now on rounds nine and 10, we are, I actually had a lot more money left in rounds nine and 10 than I expected to, which was nice. Uh, I noticed at this point though, I still hadn't drafted my fire type and I really wanted to have that core. I already have my dragon fairy steel core. I already have my uh, psychic um, fighting, I guess kind of in a way ghost, even Rotom isn't really a ghost, but I really wanted to get that fire type in there. My original draft plan was a draft uh, Magmortar, but that was on the premise of me getting things like Florges and uh, Roserade and a little bit more speedy options so I can go slower on my fire type. But since now my team is actually relatively slower overall, I needed something a little bit faster. And so with that, I chose Volcarona, base 100 speed, and it gives me something to switch into a lot of those really annoying priority options that really threaten things like my Weavile and Gardevoir between Mock Punch and Bullet Punch and Sucker Punch. Uh, Volcarona can at least threaten with a burn or make them think twice about wanting to go for that option because it's not a free option at that point. You have a 30% chance of having your Pokemon crippled. Furthermore, Volcarona gives me a very nice Pokemon that it does one thing, but it does it really, really well, and that's Quiver Dance and Set Up and Sweep Things. Um, which I don't really have another Pokemon on my team that I can say sets up like that and then sweeps through. So it's nice to have that option with Volcarona. Uh, since I did decide to go with Volcarona instead of a mono fire type like I originally planned, I needed more hazard control because right now Blastoise is just really, really forced to do a lot between Weavile and Volcarona, uh, both being weak, weak to every entry hazard that there is present. And so with that, I have Golbat for my final choice. Not a Pokemon that I have used before. It has been used against me several times, uh, specifically Frank C. Trode uh, last season. That was just, in the, the, the Lithio Battle Association, he brought a nasty plot Golbat against me and Rex Shop. And so if you can't beat them, take notes because that's how you be a, a better Player. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Golbat is one of those weird Eviolite Pokemon, or mid-tier Pokemon rather, that, uh, again, when it was first introduced, it didn't have an evolution, so its stats are actually pretty good for having access to Eviolite. Its speed tier means that it's not set up fodder, it does get access to nice taunt and haze options, and we cannot forget the ever-present Super Fang that can just immediately strip 50% off of any Pokemon. And so you're putting opponents in a position where they have to choose, okay, what do I want to do here? Do I want to lose 50%? Go back and also U-turn so I can gain momentum. Uh, go back and be very annoying and there's toxic and roost all. Uh, 
While he is weak to a lot of different Pokemon, I have all of those options covered very nicely with the rest of my Pokemon, uh, which enables Golbat to defog a lot more. Fortunately, defog can be bred onto Golbat, otherwise I would not have chosen him for this role. Thank goodness, otherwise my options would have been like defog Scyther or something, which is no good for this type of team. And uh, I finally get my poison presence that I wanted so long ago in this team. So uh, now I can at least use Sludge Bomb with some impunity, uh, or I guess Poison Fang if I really wanted to, but that's not something I see happening too often. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very pleased with my team overall. I'm pretty excited for battling with this team. I feel like the when people see my team, it's the same reaction I normally get when I draft, which is, well, why would you draft that? Or why'd you go with those options? And that's where I really thrive, because then I get to turn around and go, you didn't expect this, did you? So that's what we're going to be doing this entire season, is just defying whatever opinions people have with us. Hopefully they don't expect us to win, because then if we defy it, we'll lose. But we'll defy those negative opinions people have of the Eternity City Enders. We will end those expectations, and we'll rise to the top. No more middle of the pack, here, or there, willy-nilly type deal. This is the season, so everyone needs to prepare themselves for what's about to happen and, you know, make yourself at peace with it. Because this is going to be a great season, no matter what happens, it. and I really enjoyed myself last season too. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little draft analysis. I hope it wasn't too long. And if it was, just let me know some things that you would like to have me expound upon in the future. I am looking forward to be a little bit more... Uh, analytical on my team builder analyses. I got really lax in the last season because I was in three leagues at one time. So this time, focusing on the PPL, I have a little bit more leeway with that. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye now.